Hi folks, my name's Craig Taylor and as always a huge thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. In this video I want to share with you a short hint, tip, trick, hack, whatever you want to call it, that you might find useful if you use compasses such as this and to a slightly lesser degree compasses such as this. So if you use this type of compass there may be something in this video for you. Before I actually go on to tell you what that hack, that tip is though, let me give you a little bit of background. Back in the summer of 2000, a long time ago now, I was involved in a course in the South Wales area of the United Kingdom. Part of that course involved me navigating through multiple manned checkpoints with all of my kit on against the clock. I reached one of those checkpoints and was checked in. I was given the grid reference of the next checkpoint some distance away. I moved to one side and I plotted that grid reference on the map. I took a grid bearing from my current location to that location. I did a little bit of mental arithmetic and I, I changed that grid bearing to a magnetic bearing and I applied that magnetic bearing to my compass, held it up, found a feature in the distance and off I went. And then when I reached that feature, did the same thing with my compass, found another feature in the distance and off I went. And I kept repeating that until eventually I didn't reach the checkpoint. So I should have reached it, my pacing told me I should have reached it, my timing told me that I should have reached it, but I wasn't there. So I did all the usual checks, I still wasn't there. So I sat down, got my water bottle out and started to work back as to what might have gone wrong. My grid reference was correct. I double checked my grid bearing, that was correct. I double checked the conversion that I'd make to make it into a magnetic bearing, that was correct. I double checked my compass and that's where the problem was. The bearing that I'd applied to the compass had shifted. The actual compass housing had shifted whilst it was in my pocket. I'd been doing a lot of running, shuffling about and it had shifted in my pocket. When I actually look back at the compass now, I don't have it anymore, but the compass housing was quite loose. And that's a thing to bear in mind. These sorts of compasses that have no way of locking the bezel, they can wear loose and they can become, they can become quite loose. I'm not saying that they spin around like, like a wheel on a bike or anything like that, but if they're constantly in your jacket pocket or your trouser pocket, rubbing, moving about as you're walking about or running, as I am the living proof, they have a tendency to slip ever so slightly. Now I know full well that there were some things that I could have done to mitigate that. I could have double checked every single time I took that out and lined it up on a feature in the distance, I could have checked that it was still correct and I didn't. I could have double checked that the, the land that I was seeing around me was relating to what I thought I should be seeing on the map. I know I could have done that, to be fair, the area that we were in, which is a place called Elan Valley in the Bilf Wells area of South Wales, is pretty open, flat and everywhere kind of looks like everywhere else. So I'm not sure that would have worked. But before anybody makes notes in the comments below, I know that there were several things that I could have done to mitigate the problem and I didn't and that's what led to the error. The error was caused though primarily by that compass housing being loose. So here's a little tip that I'm going to share with you. Take something like this which is just a very, very simple, thick, tough, small, stubby, elastic band and just place it around your compass housing. Just slip it over the top of the compass, slide it down over the compass bezel and just leave it in place. What this does is it adds an extra piece of tension between the base plate of your compass and the bezel itself. You can see just there, hopefully, you can see that elastic band in place. I can still turn the bezel, but it's a little bit more tricky. It takes a little bit more effort. It's a bit more pressure on the fingers. And I don't think that's any bad thing, to be perfectly honest. I've been able to do this in the depths of winter with thick gloves on. It does take more effort, but I'm happy to put that extra effort in for that extra peace of mind that I'm not necessarily going to have the same problems again with that compass bezel shifting my magnetic bearing becoming wrong and me heading off on in a, you know, in a direction other than what I'd intended to do. 
So once again, just take a very, very short, stubby elastic band, slip it over that compass housing and put it in place. I'd recommend that you change it every now and then. Be aware of using rubber like that in extreme cold conditions. It could become very brittle and snap quite easily, but they cost next to nothing. I got a huge bag for about a pound from eBay. You, they, they take up no weight. They're useful in other ways if you want to carry them on their kit. Hopefully you've learned something from my past failures and my past um, terrible experiences. Hopefully this is something that you might be able to apply yourself. If you think this was useful, if it's made you think, if it's made you go and look at your compass and just see whether that compass bezel is tight or loose or not, please do give me a like. If you think there's somebody in your network that might benefit from this, please, please do feel free to share it. And as always, if you're not yet a subscriber, do please click on that subscriber button and become one. If you've not yet checked out the other videos, there should be some appearing on the screen now. There'll be a, um, a link to a playlist appearing on the screen now for my other navigation videos. Do please feel free to check those out. As always, big thank you from me to you for watching. Cheers.